Everybody's heard about heart attacks and strokes. Uh, many people, though, aren't aware that, um, that um, uh, arterial blood vessel disease uh, uh, can also very, very commonly affect the arteries that carry blood into and down the legs and can produce some very serious, uh, very serious symptoms. Uh, the earliest symptom we see uh, in patients with this disorder is what we call intermittent claudication. A patient uh, may say that, uh, you know, I set out to walk and I uh, get, uh, get about a half a block or a block and uh, my leg uh, just won't let me go any farther. I develop uh, pain in the calf or uh, the calf gets tight or it just, it just won't go any farther and I have to stop and rest and if I rest for uh, a minute or so then I can walk that same distance again only to have the same thing happen over again. And uh, typically what's happening in these patients is that they have impaired blood flow to the muscles in the calf uh, and uh, when they're at rest um, the calf muscles are getting enough blood flow to feel just fine. But when they walk that distance uh, the muscles can't get blood flow and oxygen quickly enough to keep them going comfortably and they have to stop and let the muscle recover. One of the greatest risk factors is a genetic one. Uh, again, people who have a history of um, arterial plaque disease in their family are at much greater risk for having this problem than people who don't. Uh, smokers are at great risk for developing this sort of problem. People with high blood pressure, uh, people who are overweight, people who have cholesterol abnormalities um, uh, are at risk. Really our biggest concern about patients with uh, uh, impaired blood flow to the legs is that if the impairment is, is severe enough then they are at risk for an amputation. Uh, patients with claudication um, as the only symptom uh, have a low risk of intermittent clot a low risk of amputation um, particularly if they're smokers who will stop smoking. Uh, the patients who are at great risk for amputation are patients who are experiencing pain at rest uh, in the foot or leg due to impaired circulation and what's happening there is that the nerve endings in the tissues in the leg aren't getting enough blood flow to stay comfortable. Uh, those patients, if we are not able to do something to improve the blood flow, are at great risk for an amputation and loss of the leg. Uh, patients who have begun to develop small areas of tissue breakdown or small areas of tissue gangrene uh, are at great risk for uh, amputation unless we can improve their circulation. Uh, for the people who have intermittent claudication, uh, that is that problem when they uh, 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 having limited walking distance due to blood flow um, interference, uh, generally unless their claudication symptoms are very, very severe and limiting the things they need to do or want to do, uh, we tend to discourage uh, direct surgical approaches in those patients. Many of them, uh, if they'll change their risk factors, particularly if they'll stop smoking, uh, and if they'll uh, start a regular exercise program of just walking frequently uh, every day, uh, we'll find that their walking distance improves over time. And again, these patients are not ordinarily at great risk for losing a leg, so uh, we tend to discourage operations in those patients. Patients with more advanced problems, like the patients we talked about with pain at rest in the foot or the leg, or patients who've already begun to develop areas of tissue breakdown, uh, do need to have something done, if possible, to improve their circulation. And uh, the options for treatment depend very much on uh, uh, where the disease, which part of the arterial system the disease process uh, has developed in and uh, how severe it is. Uh, options might uh, uh, might include uh, things like um, uh, procedures done uh, with catheter techniques to dilate narrowed areas in arteries, to stent n narrowed areas in arteries. We have ways nowadays uh, in some cases of being able to actually open up areas in arteries that are completely blocked.
tell patients in my practice that uh, if they are smokers and if they continue to smoke, uh, their vascular disease is going to get worse no matter what we, we do uh, uh, in the way of uh, a surgical procedure or in the way of um, medicines um, to try to make things better. Uh, it's just going to progress. So smoking cessation is probably the number one most important um, uh, uh, thing in the smokers. Uh, control of um, high blood pressure is a very important uh, factor. Um, maintaining uh, an ideal body weight, if possible, it, we think is helpful. Uh, exercise is uh, definitely helpful. Uh, we do have some medicines that over the long run seem to reduce the chance of this trouble getting worse, and one of them is simply a small dose of aspirin every day, 81 milligrams of aspirin a day. Uh, and another is um, yeah, to take one of the statin medicines daily. Those are medicines like Lipitor, Zocor, Crestor. Uh, over the long run, those tend to reduce the chance of this problem getting worse.